In this two-part series, we'll break down everything you need to know about web caching, including how it works, its advantages, and how to set up a caching policy. We'll also touch on server-side caching since it plays an important role in website performance. How the web works. Your website is a collection of pages that are grouped together. You can also think of it as a collection of files, an HTML document, images, videos, CSS, and JavaScript files, and so on. For people to access your website, it must be hosted on a machine connected to the web. That machine is your origin server, which is typically one of many servers provided by your hosting company. To access your website, visitors use their browsers, in this case called clients, which communicate with your server using HTTP requests and responses. This request response model is one of the fundamental ways in which devices in a network communicate with each other. So where does caching fit into all this? After all, we already have a client and a server, which can easily exchange information. So what's the issue? Well, this process works well only if there are a few requests coming from clients near your origin server. As the number of requests increases and distance becomes a factor, we hit a few big problems. On the one hand, each server has a limit on how many requests it can handle simultaneously, which varies based on its specs. Every request after that limit goes into a queue, resulting in longer loading times. On the other hand, repeat visitors also have to re-download the same files every time. That's a massive waste of bandwidth. Lastly, clients located far away from your server will also experience much slower loading times since data has to travel longer to reach them. All of these issues lead to slow website performance, which itself results in high bounce rates, low conversions, and overall, a bad user experience. This is where caching comes into play. The basics of web caching. In the context of the web, caching usually refers to storing a copy of your website's resources in a place called web cache. Web caches are one of the many intermediaries on the web. They sit between the origin server and the client and save HTTP responses like HTML documents, images, CSS files, and so on. These saved responses are called representations since they only represent an original resource at a specific point in time. Each representation is stored for a set amount of time, called TTL. When its TTL is reached, the resource is marked as stale and it either gets removed from the cache or must be revalidated before being served to visitors. The main job of web caches is to save and serve representations to clients who request them. When a requested resource is successfully served from cache, we have a cache hit. Conversely, when the resource can't be served from the cache, we have a cache miss. It's also important to note that your origin server also has its own cache. While it doesn't fit in the category of web caching, server-side caching can be beneficial in terms of site speed. We'll talk more about that in a bit. For now, let's look at how caching solves the problems we discussed earlier. The benefits of web caching. First, with a proper caching policy, a lot of requests don't need to go to your origin server. This reduces its load and helps it handle high traffic situations. Next, caching and distributing content from different locations shortens the physical distance between our website's resources and our visitors. This is typically done with a content delivery network. Lastly, storing copies of your website's files in different locations reduces some of the risk of downtime. While caching isn't the only way to mitigate this risk, it certainly plays an important role. Now that we know why caching is important, let's talk about the different caching types. As we said, the origin server itself has a caching layer, which can be used in various situations. For example, your server might generate different versions of the same page, depending on user's device, behavior, location, or other factors. Creating these pages can be pretty resource intensive, as the server probably needs to make database calls and API requests. To avoid doing that every time, the server can create the page once, save it in its cache, and serve it to future visitors who fit the same criteria. There are a few different types of caching that happen on the server. One, full page caching for HTML information that is served repeatedly. Two, object caching, which is used to speed up data retrieval from a database. Three, opcode cache for PHP, saving CPU time from repeated parsing, memory cache for storing variables or commonly used data in memory, and more. Again, all of these are examples of server side caching since they happen on the server level and not on the web. 
Techniques 1 and 2 can massively reduce a website's time to first byte. Web caching. Beyond the server, we can also add other caching layers via content delivery networks, or CDNs, and browser caches, both of which are examples of web caches. CDNs are networks of servers distributed all over the globe. Their job is to cache resources and serve them from the location that's closest to the client. Again, this is beneficial for the origin server, as a lot of requests don't reach it. It's also beneficial for visitors, as data arrives faster from a closer location. CDNs can also be used as public caches, meaning they can serve content to different visitors simultaneously. Browsers, on the other hand, also have their own caches, which save resources on the visitor's devices. This makes them extremely fast, as the requests don't need to go out of the network at all. Browser caches are also private since they serve resources to only one user. In short, we can cache files on our server, on a CDN, or directly on visitors' devices via browser caching. This covers the where part of caching. Now, let's talk about what we can actually cache. Static versus dynamic content caching. Caching different types of resources requires different considerations. For example, static resources are fairly easy to cache. They're the same for all visitors, so you can be pretty aggressive with your caching policy. Some examples include images, logos, downloadable content like PDFs, and other media files. On the flip side, dynamic content is more difficult to cache. For instance, if a page looks different for visitors depending on their device, behavior, or location, caching becomes trickier since we'd need to ensure that all users are seeing the content that's relevant to them. These pages are usually generated via scripts on the origin server, but modern technologies make it possible to do that directly in a web cache. A quick way to find potential candidates for caching is to use PageSpeed Insights Serve Static Assets with at an Efficient Caching Policy audit. This audit looks at when a resource was last changed, compared to its time to live to decide whether it should be cached or not. In the next episode, we'll continue on this topic with more information on how to actually create a caching policy via your server's HTTP headers. Stay tuned.